What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Jay Buck from Real Stories. It's crazy windy today, so if the audio is a bust, hopefully I can pick it up in post, but if not, sorry for that. I wanted to come to you guys today regardless about one of my favorite baits of all time. It's a top water, you know I love top water. And I just wanted to bring it to you because I don't know if enough guys are throwing it. It's a premium bait. It's coming in at $20. Before you cancel out of this video, stick around to the end. I'll give you guys another option if you guys don't want to break your bank with a $20 lure. But I'm telling you, this bait is a killer. Have you ever thrown this Mega Bass Pot Max? It's a half ounce lure and it's just borderline amazing. I, I, I'm always throwing this thing. It's tied on half of the time. A lot of guys wait to throw a walking bait into the fall. It really shines in fall when these bass are feeding up and getting ready to, to hunker down for the, for the winter. But guys, I'm throwing top water well before some of these people. A lot of guys talk about 50 degrees water temp is when they start taking a look at top water. I, I've been smashing fish in waters in the high 30s and that sounds crazy i'm in the Mich in michigan we're in the midwest it's typically colder here it's it's almost mid-may and i think it's 35 40 degrees right now i mean i've i've got a full jacket on i got the buff i, I even brought some gloves because my hands are already cold but regardless i wanted to talk to you guys about this bait so we're going to talk about a few things we're going to talk about what it is why to throw it where to throw it when to throw it and the type of gear you're going to be throwing it on so without further ado let's talk about this first one right here this is threadfin shad but it's more than just a walking bait guys you can see it's got a nice cut mouth it's it's gonna spit a ton of water but you can see those slits right in the front there that's gonna pull in a ton of water so it spits a ton of bubble trail and you can see under here there's even more for that bubble trayer to spit around Th this is why it's 20 bucks i used to be a non-believer in these expensive baits i wouldn't throw them didn't want to risk throwing them i mean who wants to buy a 20 dollar lure throw it for 20 minutes get it hooked up snagged bust off it it's it ruins your day but when you guys start smashing on this i i know you're gonna think differently and to be honest, the beauty of this bait and why it's such a favorite of mine, it's not just a walking bait. You can throw this bait year round. And why? Because it doubles as probably one of the best poppers on the market too. A lot of guys throw the popper early, really slow, just twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch, pause, and just wait. Wait for that blow up. And you can do this with, with this bait. And if you need to walk it back back to the boat or back to the bank, you, 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 you got it. This, this bait is hands down one of the best walking top waters on the market. Comes in at about half an ounce and, and, it's, and it's amazing. So where are you going to throw it? Everywhere. I throw it over grass. I throw it next to lay down wood. I throw it next to the lilies. I, I'm throwing it borderline everywhere. I throw it open water a little less. I typically go with a bigger walking bait at that point, but this this has a ton of drawing power. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's got a really nice rattle, and it comes with some decent hardware. I'm not saying it's the best hardware. I do throw these stock in the beginning, but if I'm in a tournament situation, I am changing these out. They come with a feather on it. That's nice. It really adds to the action. But I, like I said, I'm typically removing this stuff and switching it out. I'm switching it out to some owner hyperwire split rings, typically a three or a number four. I'll link all of that down below so you don't have to think about it. Don't try to remember it. Don't try to wait and go back. Don't try to pause. Just keep up, keep up with me and it'll be all down below in the video description when you're ready. So, so again, comes with a feather. It's, it's a nice feather. It's not, it's not overly amazing. It doesn't have any clear coat on it, which is kind of a bummer for a $20 bait. And I think the split rings are kind of, 
I don't want to say they're junk because there's there's definitely worse on the market, but it's definitely not one of the best split rings out there. So again, if I'm in a tournament situation or if I just if I know I'm going to be around some hogs, I'm going to switch these out. So again, owner hyperwire, and then I really like to go with a, a tipped in hook. These are round bend hooks. I like to go with a, a, a tipped in point. I think it pins these fish better with these trebles. And I, it, once they're hooked up, they they have a lot less chance to shake them off. Now if, now if your bass are not totally committing to the bay or if they're slashing at it and you're not really getting a hook, a hook up, stick with the round bend. You're, gonna, you're definitely gonna hook up more, but again, it's gonna be tougher to keep those fish pinned. So smaller hooks, they're, they're like a silver, I really like a matte hook. These aren't my favorite, but they, they do it. So next, some colors to throw this bait. You got, you got your bold. Some bold colors, we got white python right here. That's a must. And then we got a rochi here. That's another killer. When you have some overcast, uh, it's, a, it's a rainy day give them something to look at they need they need some presence uh, the, the rattle's gonna draw them yeah but they they need that presence from below they want to see the bottom they want to see that silhouette moving back and forth and they're really it's really gonna help them key in on it so keep to your darks with the overcast the rainy days heavier wind uh, once it gets a little too windy it's kind of tough to keep an eye on the bait it, it doesn't spit that much where you can throw it 60 yards and and see it way out there so calmer days is definitely going to produce better next most of the time i'm throwing this some sort of clear this right here is a killer you can see it's got a green to rolls into a little white with a little bit of a purpley pearlescent bluish this is a this is a banging color i really like that and this was probably one of my newest ones it's called mb gizzard it's a gizzard shad look i'm in michigan where my fish are feeding on primarily perch bluegill and other panfish but i'm still hammering with this bait they they really like that natural presence it it's not overpowering those those cloudy days the borderline sun just high sun stick to something clear they're really going to hone in on more of a natural presence if you stick to a bold pattern in those days you're going to get some strikes but you're going to get significantly at less in my opinion so get yourself some clear and then finally something something with a lot of flash this is my primary color of all time you can see this bait has been absolutely thrashed i've caught so many fish on this it's it's insane uh it's wakasagi it's tough to come by so if you see them in stock somewhere pick up pick up two i know i know that's 40 bucks but it's it's gonna be it's gonna be well worth it start here if you're really nervous about getting into this type of bait i throw it in the the crappy days i throw it on the great days it's it's very versatile and i love it now I want to show you one of the issues I have with this bait, and it's a lot of rash. You can see how that hook lays right on the belly like that. When I'm casting this thing, these hooks are swaying through the air, destroying the bottom of the bait. And unfortunately, you can't help that most of the time, but you can do your best to take care of that in your box. I made a different video in the past about hook covers and these are a no-brainer I'll link that above so you guys can check it out if you're not using them they're not expensive it's gonna really help you organize your tackle and get your tackle out on the go and it's gonna minimize that that hook from grinding on these baits when you're moving around in the boat when your boats on plane when you're hitting waves or if you're just digging in the tackle box throughout the day so again I'll link that up above but Wakasagi is an amazing color to go with so again go with something bold whites and blacks a clear the natural colors those natural tones if you have ultra clear water stick to clear they're they're not used to seeing a bold pattern in their face so they're a lot less likely to commit and then finally something with a lot of flash so they can see it from a great distance now if I had to pick one more color 
of course, it's going to be some sort of bluegill. This is uh, Mega Bass's pumpkin seed color, I believe. And you can see it's got a whole bunch of yellow, a whole bunch of green, a whole bunch of blue. It's, it's basically a warm mouth. And I throw this one a little bit less, but if I had to go with a fourth tone, it's this. Springtime, this is a good choice as well, just because bass are starting to think about getting on the beds. Once they start getting on the beds, this becomes a little more predominant for me because as you know, bass hate bluegill around their beds. And I know this isn't bed fishing, but if you throw this shallow enough, absolutely a bass is gonna smash this. It's it's gonna try to get it away from the bed. They're fearing that these bluegill are coming come in there and harass them. So consider the bluegill as patterns as well, but just a little bit less than the others. So now, what time of year to throw this bait? All year. Like I said, it's a great popping bait. It's a great walking bait. You can dead stick it if you need. That goes along with the popping action. And you don't need to wait till fall. You don't need to wait till midsummer to really throw it. So I think you guys need to consider it. it it's an amazing lure. And you probably already have some gear to throw it on. Now I'm throwing this one right here. This is one of their other gill patterns. It's called secret gill, I believe. Oh, this is a prime example. Let me back back up just a little bit. Let me unhook my bait just a bit. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that very well. I bent out this hook on a fish. These, these hooks are more of a finesse hook. A lot of companies really cheapen up on their hardware and spend a lot of time putting most of their focus in the bait. And that's okay, I definitely understand that. I'd rather have more time and effort spent in the actual lure itself and I can upgrade my hardware when I'm ready. But like I said, you will bend these out if you pull on these fish too hard or if you get up on a big one. And you, you, you don't wanna miss fish, guys. This That is the heartbreak of the day when you have a good one on. If you need you need that uh, that kicker fish and, and you lose it just because your hardware wasn't up to snuff. So just remember, you will bend these out if you're not careful, so upgrade. And I'm gonna link down below my favorite hooks to swap these out. So back to the rod. I'm throwing this on an Orochi. It's actually their jerkbait special. Rated for three eighths to three quarter ounce, so it meets right in the middle. Slings that bait amazingly, and the be the best thing about this jerk bait rod is is the the handle. You can see how short this is. It, it's really going to help you guys walk the bait because when you guys are walking it, you're going to be walking it, walk, 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 and you don't want that butt bouncing off your arm here. That's really going to reduce the action of the bait it's going to make it tough for you to stay in command of your bait so you can throw you can throw this lure on a lot of different rods don't don't get that twisted but you're going to have the most it's going to be most easy with a rod with a shorter handle and a, a jerk bait rod does very well again this orochi is a killer uh shimano has some killer jerk bait rods but i, I also throw this on a, a traditional medium medium heavy uh fast action i started out without these more specialized rods and I was throwing it on my Zodius you guys you guys know how much I love the Zodius and uh, it it got the job done it, it wasn't perfect I did I did rip these baits out of a few fish's mouth just because that that fast action just wasn't enough to pin it so then I I moved over to a jerk bait rod I I considered using a crankbait rod there they work as well but I, I just like the backbone and uh, the action of this jerkbait rod. And now let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's see if I can give you a good angle. You can see that tip right there. It, it's not even halfway down the rod, not even close like a crankbait rod. It's up into the top third. And that's really gonna allow you guys to walk this bait uh, extremely well. And then when, when you set into a fish, it's you're going to quickly get into the backbone of the rod and you're going to have no problem keeping these fish pinned. So again, some sort of jerkbait rod is amazing. Consider a, a crankbait rod. If you if you have one of those, that's, that's a great choice just to get yourself into it if you're not throwing a walking bait like this. I'm sure a lot of guys are. I just wanted to show you guys the fact that this mega bass, this, whoa, 
man guys this wind is just ridiculous so jumping back into it had a little wind blow everything over i'm throwing this this specific rod is got the scorpion mgl on it you might not have ever heard of this it's a jdm a jdm reel i got it from digitaka if you guys have never used them you need to think about it if you're gonna go something jdm they're really knowledgeable they and they get your stuff to you in a hurry but basically it's it's just a Corrado, a Corrado 200. It's it's the exact same platform. It's just got this beautiful maroon. Oh, I just, this is just amazing. I mean, look at that. That's a whole nother video in itself, guys. It's, this is a beautiful reel and it slings this bait no problem. I use this reel for a ton of different applications, but specifically I really like it on this jerk bait, uh, jerk bait rod for top waters and other jerk baits in those heavier top waters. Now I'm also throwing this Pot Max on this X Pride. This has actually got a little bit a little jerk bait on it right now. But this 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 rod is I don't even know how to explain it to you guys. It's have you guys ever held a rod that you just couldn't believe how light it was? I got it paired with an Aldebaran so this is a really high-end setup, guys. You do not, I repeat, you absolutely do not need something like this for this Pot Max, but I really like it for a jerk bait, and it doubles it doubles amazingly well for this Pot Max. If I'm throwing lighter cover, if I'm throwing really short, and I need, I just need a couple rods with me, I'm gonna bring this one because it's very versatile, and I'm gonna be able to throw a bunch of different things. I've I throw top water on this, I throw cranks on this, I throw a jerk bait on this, and it's it's absolutely amazing. This one again is paired with that Aldebaran, so it really slings the bait very well. I actually got this paired up with 40 pound Power Pro uh, Slick V2 braid. I really like it in the black onyx. And then I'm going to, uh, on this rod, I'm going to a 12 pound maxima, maxima mono, monofilament leader. I'm going between I don't know, between at least a foot to three foot of leader. So when I set, that mono is gonna have a lot of give, so it really helps pin those hooks rather than just rip them straight out of the fish's mouth. Now, on this, the bigger rod here, I've got it on a 15 pound Maxima Ultra Green. I really like the Maxima line. I really like the green, I call Ultra Green for a reason. It's got that little bit of a green tint in it. And it it's, They've been around forever and I've absolutely fallen in love with with their line and I've seen no reason to change. Now, a lot of guys ask me why the mono and it's a very simple answer if you don't already know. Mono floats, uh, not amazing. I mean, you can battle all day long about what line floats, what line doesn't, what to use, what. But long story short, guys, absolutely never use fluorocarbon for your top water applications. It sinks. It's going to dip that nose of the bait down, and it's going to make it. It's going to make it really hard for you guys to get this action that you want. It's really going to hinder you. So stick with the mono. Now you guys can go straight braid on this if you wish. I typically don't, and that's because braid is very loose and. Let me show you what I mean by that. There's not a lot of rigidity in the braid. You can see how that just flops around and just does it. That's 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 specifically why right here. When you throw this bait out and that slack line, because you're throwing this on semi-slack line because you need to get that walk. If you keep it tight line, you're you're gonna blow out the bait. You're not gonna get that nice twitching action that you you need for this type of bait. So the braid, you can see it's really flimsy and loose. That's gonna hang down in front of your bait, and you're gonna follow you follow your hook over and over and over, and that's one of the quickest things where I just don't want to throw it anymore is when when just things aren't going your way. So stick to braid to a leader, guys. It's it's your choice again, but I think that's gonna help. The rigidity of this mono is, I mean, you can see I got slack line on it, and it's still pulling out. See, you're not gonna follow your hooks with this. And then I run a snap. I Traditionally, this is a VMC. It's okay for the lighter stuff. 
it's it's not amazing i have opened these things up and lost some fish and i've actually lost some baits throwing it through the air if you backlash and this thing isn't this thing is worn out you will rip off your bait and lose it so i have started to switch over to uh to straight to owner i really like their snaps i'm sticking to between a one two or a three depending on the day i try to go as small as as i possibly can and i'll link that again down below now i like the snap because you can see it gives a lot a free swinging movement to this bait it's really gonna add a ton of walk to this bait I don't go straight to the line I do sometimes if if I'm just not scratch that I, I typically don't 99.9% .9 of the time I'm throwing it on a snap and 100% of the time I am not throwing the, throwing it on a loop knot and for you guys that are more power to you I hope it I hope you guys have been successful but that knot is so weak and you're gonna lose a ton of fish on it. That It's just not, it, does, it has a really low breaking strength. When you're on a fish and you're pulling on it, the you're throwing on that you're pulling on the knot, yeah, but the bait itself is pulling straight on that line. So you are, you're putting a lot of stress on the line where it's not meant to be. So you're gonna crimp it a little bit and you're gonna, it's, it's, it's gonna raise the chance to break off. So. If you're not, consider the snap. If you don't want a snap, I recommend going straight to the lure and with your 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 favorite polymer knot, uh, double double polymer is all right, but not a loop knot. That's that's just me. So let me know what you guys are doing down below. If you guys like the loop knot, let me know what you're doing to keep that thing from breaking because I've just not had the success that I've wished I've had out of it and I've pretty much abandoned it for all applications, flukes, for top water, anything. I just, I don't, I don't do it anymore. So, again, this Pot Max is a must and it's a $20 bait. It's premium and it's a no-brainer. For the guys that aren't willing to drop 20 bucks on a bait i completely get that 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 is that is a straight a really big jump for just one lure i recommend trying a bait that's ultra similar to this bait show one this is the river to sea bubble walker this is the smaller size they have a giant one. Oh, i actually have one here now look at this Jesus, look at the size difference in these. This is definitely over an ounce, so you're not gonna be throwing this on a light jerkbait rod like, like this smaller one. But if you guys are trying to get after some big, big pike, big musky, this, this is a must have. It's, it seems like overkill. I've, it's been tough for me to get guys to consider these giant baits here in Michigan. It's just cause it's not typically done, but, it smashes and these fish don't see it very often but again that's that's a different category in its own bigger fish so back to this bubble walker the one thing i really like about this bait a lot more than the mega bass is their hardware now i really don't like the long shank of a hook i really like a smaller shank in it i like a 2x which this is and you can see those hooks those hooks are tipped in this is a uh, a great alternative and they modeled this I mean it's obvious that they modeled it after the pop max and I mean if you think otherwise let me know but it's it's virtually the same bait minus a few key things one the rattle you can see the mega bat is a lower pitch than this this sounds a little more glassy and two like I showed you in the beginning it's got it's got the holes in the mouth in the front like you see right here but it does not have that extra gill flare on the bottom like the mega bass that that's really what sets these two apart so i i prefer this but don't get me wrong i throw this a lot i mean that's why i have it i have a ton of different colors in it river to sea does a great job with their colors 
think this one's like Terminator. It's got that clear. It's also got the flash. So you can you can get away with just grabbing a handful of a handful of these guys. Ah! Get that off of there. It's another color for you guys to check out. So again, if you don't want to drop 20 bucks, I understand. So think about this river to sea. It's like it's virtually the same bait, just with a little bit of difference. And I change out the hardware a little less on these. I keep the hooks. I still do change out the split rings because they're again they're they're weak as well. So guys, if you're throwing a walking bait, don't wait to the dead of summer. Don't wait to the fall. Like I said, they really shine in the fall. That's when the fish are really gonna start honing in on that walking bait. But these are these are some really ultra refined poppers that will double as a walking bait as well. So I stick to these. I like the traditional, like a Rapala popper. But this, I mean, why not? Why would you not go two baits in one and and deal with a popper that? It's just it's a, it's a single application. I, it's just a, it's a no-brainer. So, walking baits, guys, they're absolutely amazing. Fish crush them. You love top water. I love top water. Mega bass, pot max for the W. And if you guys need to get into it without any problems, think about that river to see. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know what your favorite pop and walking bait is. If you're throwing this mega bass, let me know. Let me know what your biggest fish is. Mine personally is a 5.5 smallmouth. Oh, uh, amazing. That was just, it was an excellent fight, rainy day. That's a story for another time. So again, like, subscribe, comment, do what you do. I appreciate all your support. Thank you all for watching and uh, helping me get this real stories fishing thing kicked off. And until I catch you guys later, keep fishing.